So I was sitting back thinking about some of the moves that the Cowboys been making over the past. So I've been thinking of some of the moves that the Cowboys front office have been making just over the past uh, three to four or so years or whatnot. And I know I know Cowboy fans are going to find a way to, you know, complain about anything or to say that Jerry Jones need to go or Stephen Jones needs to go. Um, but I think that some of that blame is kind of ill placed because I think the Cowboys have been doing a fantastic job of not feeding into that emotion or that inner I am legend monster you know this ain't this ain't the the type of organization that does things because the fans cry for it you know what I mean and I like that I like that about them so I just kind of want to go over a handful of things that the Cowboys have been doing front office wise uh just you know some impressive moves some things that I like and you know in my opinion because y'all know how I get down in my opinion a handful of these moves are going to be the reasons why we're going to be perennial Super Bowl contenders. I just been thinking about a lot of the free agent moves that the Cowboys have been made off season moves, off season moves that the Cowboys have been making over the past few years or so. And I really like what they've been doing. I really like what they've been doing. They, they're, they're trusting their hand. They're trusting the research. They're not the, they're not the type of front office that'll listen to a fan base and say you, you need to sign Clowney today, or you, you need to send all your picks to Jamal Adams today. You know, they're not the front office to do that. There are some front offices that do that. They'll, you know, live based on what fans are saying. I'm glad that Stephen Jones and Will McClay and them don't necessarily go by this train of thought. And I know it's easy for a Cowboy fan to say that Jerry Jones is terrible, he's trash or whatnot. But if you look at how this thing has been run, the machine of it, if you look at how it's been run the past couple years or so, just in terms of player acquisition, you can't really complain about what the Cowboys have been doing. You've got to love the idea of we don't get caught up in your free agents. They free agents for a reason. You know, if you didn't want to pay them big money, there's got to be a reason why you didn't want to do it. And I like that. I like that. Cowboys are really good with their resources, you know, and I think what what they don't get enough credit for is being incredibly patient. You know, of course, there's that first wave of free agency, you know, where Tom Brady's out there and, you know, the these superstar guys are in that first tier. But we never do that. We always wait till like, you know, if free agency starts Thursday, we'll, you know, we we next Wednesday with it. <laughs> you know, what I mean, we're, we're just going to wait next Wednesday. And that's when we make our moves. And I think that's very appropriate because if you go out and sign Jadevian and Clowney week one for 20 million dollars. You have no idea that in free agency week, we like what, nine now, 10, 11 in free agency. You wouldn't know that if you get around to free agency week number 12, that hey, maybe Jadavian Clown is not worth $20 million or, or and Dominican Sue is not worth $19 million. You know, I know a lot of Cowboy fans want to jump on that deal first. Right. But I think there is something to bargain shopping and there is something to, uh, you know, instead of just running out first, let me check and see what these other stores selling they price for. Let me look through my Q coupon book and see what's going on and you gauge your options okay so instead of getting an indomitian sue for 10 to 11 million dollars we can get a gerald mccoy for six to seven you see what i mean and i know that number may not sound like a lot yo vach is only three million dollars but if you save three million dollars on three people then you just made $9 million. Zadarius Smith made 16.5 million last year and he got 13 sacks. Uh, he's a former Baltimore Ravens, went to the uh, Green Bay Packers. However, Robert Quinn made half that money. He made like $8 million with us and he got 10.5 sacks, right? And he missed two games. So let's just say he got a sack and a half that game or whatever. So you save $8 million and you only one sack off. I think there's value in that. You know what I mean? That's like, like that's a whole $8 million or Cole Beasley going to Buffalo to make $7.5 million and we get Randall Cobb for 4.9. You know what I'm saying? I think there's something to bargain shopping. Uh, you know, you, you just can't assume that 
you're never going to find that replacement. You just can't assume that, oh man, we let go of this guy. What are we going to do now? You can mix and match this thing however you want to do it, you know? So now we're looking at a situation where, man, you could have paid Jadavion Clowney 20, but if you wait a little bit, you can get Everson Griffin for 13 if that's something you want to do. And you, you can't be afraid to let go of players, you know, because you're always going to get players. There's a new crop of players, whereas 250 some odd people get drafted every single year. There's a new crop that's constantly coming in. You can never say um, that you can't get somebody. I mean, I didn't want to let go of Byron Jones, but if Trevon Diggs come here and get two interceptions, y'all going to lose y'all damn mind. Scream, Byron never did that. Think about what the Cowboys did, right? Um, Robert Quinn went to the Chicago Bears. And he's making like, what, $13 million or something? 13, 14 million. Think about this. Alden Smith, so he just got reinstated. So as of now, he's making $29. Alden Smith got to get 14 sacks to even make $4 million. You know what I'm saying? And I don't think that's the case. So let's just say Alden Smith costs $2 million. Randy Gregory costs $2 million. Tyrone Crawford, who will probably take a pay cut, but Tyrone Crawford, he making eight right now. So let's just say even even Tyrone Crawford making eight million pre pay cut, right? And then you draft Bradley or not. You got four different defensive ends that cost the same as Robert Quinn going to damn uh, Chicago, right? So Robert Quinn, who's a good pass rusher, but a lot, but he's a liability in the run game. We kind of got this Voltron of defensive ends, Team Toxic. We got this Voltron where, cool, we'll let Tyrone Crawford play run game. Cool, we'll let Alden Smith do some pass rushy things. And I think he could possibly play three tape because he's 290 some pounds now. Plus, he can play strong side defensive end for you. Um, then Randy's a rotational guy. Bradley and Nas a rotational guy. You just got four guys for the cost of what you got with Robert Quinn. You can't ask me, Vach, where can we find another Robert Quinn? The exact same same damn place you got him. Somebody on Twitter was like, Vash, where can we, you better sign Leighton Vanderish. You, you better hope you get another Leighton, where can we find another Leighton Vanderish? The same damn place you got Leighton Vanderish. Think about the Baltimore Ravens. They don't pay their linebackers and pass rushes. They may pay like one or two guys, but they don't pay like all their guys for real, for real. Cause look at what they did this year. They drafted three linebackers. They drafted two. And I think one was a, uh, one was a free agent. They draft linebackers, pass rushes and all that. They draft linebackers. So they not constantly just paying linebackers. You can't be afraid to replace people. And I love the Cowboys for doing that. One last thing the Cowboys did, man, they keep this offensive line room thick, man. Cause you just can't be in a situation where Chaz Green is your last hope. He's he, he can't be your last resort. You know what I'm saying so even though connor williams is your starting left guard let's just go get connor mcgovern because you never know now he can play center cool let's draft the center in the fourth round tyler bad let's trade up with the eagles and go get him because you never know then we got joe looney i don't think cam Irvin's is gonna do anything here but if he if if Cam Irving is better than Brandon Knight, then he's valuable. You know what I'm saying? Keep that room full. Just acquire guys. Acquire guys, and when the chips fall, you let them fall. I love how thick we keep this offensive line room because that's 45 percent of your offense, roughly 46 or whatever. And if one of those guys go down, that unit goes down. You can't say, "Oh, you got Pro Bowlers over here. You should be able to make it with that." We seen we seen Chaz Green on the field with three Pro Bowls, and that shit didn't even look good you know what i'm saying so i don't want to hear you know what what can it can't happen with that man you got to love your front off for, for keeping this offensive line full you got to love them for, for their money saving tactics you got to love them for how they draft and you got to love them for not complying with y'all you got to love them for not throwing 20 million dollars at Jadevian and clowny the titans ain't even talking to clowny no more you don't want to you don't want to be a team that sell your soul for one super bowl run the giants sold they sold and now they terrible the 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 Rams sold they sold and now they terrible. These teams throw out all this money to build these teams and they don't make the Super Bowl and they look bad afterwards. They just look bad afterwards, you know? You don't wanna be those guys. And I know a lot of people will sell their soul for one Super Bowl. But think about the Eagles, man. The Eagles got, look, they got one Super Bowl and they miserable now. They just won the Super Bowl 600 or so days ago, I can't count. And now they right back miserable. 
You know what I'm saying? I don't want to be the guy that wins one Super Bowl and that's trash for five years. I want to win a Super Bowl and contend and contend, win another one and contend and fall off for two years because Dak leg start hurting because he old and contend again. That's what I want. Follow me on Twitter, like, comment, subscribe, sub, and all that. And um, shouts out to Fusty King. I'm stealing his idea, and I told him I'm stealing his idea. I want y'all to leave some questions in this comment section, in this chat box. Um, and the next, um, the next one of these I do, the next blog soliloquy I do, I'll be taking y'all questions, and that'll be what we talk about. All right? Y'all hold it down for the Dosky, Wolski, Peaski, Whiskey, man. Salute.